to Hanon or not to Hanon? That is the question. There are those that will tell you that technical exercises such as those you find in Hanon are absolutely vital if you want to gain any kind of good technique as a pianist. And then there are others that will tell you that if anything, they're probably more likely to be dangerous. Just to make matters worse, of course, you'll find that in both camps there are eminent pianists who support both viewpoints. So what's an amateur to do? Well, stay tuned as I give you some alternative thoughts to approach this problem. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first visit here, then please do remember to subscribe. Simply click the little icon in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. An entire generation of pianists was brought up using Hanon's virtuoso pianist, using Cherny and others, plus a healthy slice of scales and arpeggios. And of course, we're told that this is the way people have learned the piano for years, so why try to do anything different? Don't fix something that isn't broken. Yeah, you'll also find very respectable voices that say that this is not necessarily the only way forward. Two of the main ones that I like to quote are Martha Argerich and Richter. You know, Martha Argerich, and I've seen this in a few places, has said that she's not a believer in technical exercises or scales and that kind of thing. She firmly believes that you need to fix technical problems from the inside the pieces where you find them. Richter, as the other example, was apparently self-taught into his 20s and his father despaired of him not learning piano properly and not doing the exercises and scales he should have been doing. Yet his mother said, no, 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 leave him alone, because she could clearly see that without any of this stuff, he was clearly extremely good on piano. I personally don't really like technical exercises. I can't honestly see the point in subjecting myself to playing the same thing in both hands octave after octave, key after key, when this almost never happens in real music. The only time I can think of off the top of my head where you might see this would be perhaps in Chopin's Revolutionary Etude, where you've got a couple of bars in the middle that both hands are playing exactly the same thing, and then you've got a couple of bars at the end where this happens again. But otherwise, your hands are occupied doing different things all the time. Don't get me wrong, if you find value in Hanon exercises, then by all means continue. I'd also recommend just watch the rest of this video because I'm sure you'll find the alternatives will also be useful for you in your practice. Of course, the main thing now to consider is if you're not going to do traditional technical exercises, how then do you actually go about getting better at the things that you're not able to do easily? In other words, how do you go about building your technique? Basically, the strategy that I adopted was to create exercises for myself from within the bits of pieces I found difficult to play. Now, this is easier said than done, I admit. There are things such as what actually constitutes an exercise, how do you work out where exercises might be, is not always that straightforward to do. And perhaps it's also a reason why so many people will use Hanon type exercises, because it, it's just already done for you. To help illustrate my point, let's take a look at Handel's Allegro that's featured in Melanie Spanswick's Play It Again Piano Book 2. Regular viewers will know that I bought this book and I'm gradually working my way through it as part of my relearning journey on piano. For me, there are a few places that initially I found quite tricky to master. The finger works quite intricate and it needs to be relatively fast. What I found is that when you're approaching something like this that you find difficult, then simply repeating the passage time after time, even taking it very slow, really doesn't work very well for me. And this is where the idea of creating little exercises comes in very handy. 
If you've got Rami Barnim's book, The Art of Piano Fingering, that I reviewed recently, then you'll know from that book that one of the things Rami advises is to look for patterns within the music. And he talks about these patterns because they're very good at helping inform on what would be a good fingering to use. But I've also found that they help working out where exercises can be made. If we look at this particular small section here, then when you look very carefully, you'll see that there are basically three five finger positions that are repeated almost identically. So this therefore means that the first thing I can say is likely I can use exactly the same fingering for each of these three occurrences of that pattern. But then secondly, I can use each occurrence as a self-contained exercise. So once we've got the first set of exercises under control, probably the next thing that we're going to find difficult is actually joining the two five finger positions together. Now of course, you could simply lift and shift your hand, that would probably work if you were using pedal, but if you don't want to use the pedal, then you don't really want to be doing a full lift and shift. So to help get over this technical problem, I then created an exercise that works on just the join between the two positions. Now each day when I practice, I use a combination of these different exercises, plus of course the usual culprits of staccato, strong fingers, rhythms, etc. This then effectively means that when I first started learning this piece, I spent virtually no time at all playing it through. I spent all of my allocated daily practice time to this on working on those exercises to get the technical difficulties better under control. Fortunately, with this particular piece, that pattern repeats itself elsewhere. So in fact, you've got ready-made exercises for more than one section of the same piece of music. You can apply this same idea to pretty much any piece of music you like, to be honest. For example, when I started learning this Liebestraum number no. 3, even though this part at the very beginning of the piece isn't particularly difficult to do when you consider it with the rest of the piece, I found that quite often the arpeggio accompaniment wasn't as smooth as I liked and it wasn't as quiet as I liked. So basically, for a couple of minutes per day, I exercised it in this way. Another good example is this particular passage of Debussy's first arabesque. This is notoriously tricky and there are umpteen ways that you can make exercises out of this. In fact, this is a particular passage that Graham Fitch specifically calls out in his Piano Practice ebook series. So the way I went about practicing this when I was learning it was to do these exercises plus of course lots of others. I'm sure you're getting the general idea by now. It's simply a case of finding the parts in a piece that you know you don't particularly play very well and then working out how can you go about turning that into a small self-contained exercise that will help train your brain and your fingers to get it better. The real beauty of this technique is that you can basically be as creative as you like in devising these exercises. 
I generally do them hands separately, but then there are occasions where I'll do an exercise hands together because I read again, I think it was Graham Fitch that advised if you've got a weaker hand that has trouble doing something, then use the other hand to help teach it by basically using the other hand to play in unison the tricky passage with it. I hope then that this video has given you some starter ideas of how you can make exercises for yourself rather than needing to fall back on technical exercises such as Hanon. Of course, the obvious rebuttal from a Hanon fan would be, ah yes, but if you'd spent time practicing your Hanon, then you wouldn't need to have spent time practicing this particular passage because it would be a lot easier. And of course that's true, and it's, what I'm trying to say is it's not about whether one is better than the other, it's simply about what do you believe gives you the most bang for your buck, and what do you find the most interesting and motivating way to practice. I certainly know which I prefer of the two. Let me know in the comments below the approach that you prefer. If you're not already, then please do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, Click on the little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week.